Hello and welcome to uh, an inspirational community collaboration. Um, this is, uh, what are we, Witchy Wednesday. Yes, we are Witchy Wednesday and I am sporting my favourite uh, witchy uh, outfit and a new witchy ring I've got. It's very witchy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, witchy, wizardy, magical and creative. Um, please like and share this uh, film as I'm doing now. Uh, the pre the pre start. I'm always uh, liking and sharing. Share to any groups you've got. Blah blah blah. Uh, this is the last uh, week at this time. Um, there's going to be a week break uh, next week, and then it, we're going to start at nine till eleven a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, sorry, Pacific Standard Time. Um, today's guests are fantastic magical beings in this um, wizardy witchy Wednesday. We have Anders Gustavsson. Did I do that right? Today we're talking about basically community and collaborative community design and what is the magic that's behind collaborative community design, what's necessary for it. So without further ado, uh, let's go over to meet Anders. Anders, good afternoon of evening. Hello, good How to be with you. Tell us about yourself. What's your background? I know you've been in business and entrepreneurial and then so give us give us a lowdown of where you came from too. Sure, sure. Thank you. Um, so uh, I've had a pretty interesting life. Uh, um, I came over here from Sweden actually when I was uh, when I was eleven. So I'm a first generation uh, American, and uh, came to land of opportunity, and uh, followed my dad. Uh, my dad was an entre tech entrepreneur. And uh, he was uh, he was successful. Had a beautiful uh, beautiful exit. But what I learned through just watching him was that it ended up six years later in divorce. And um, and I never really got to spend much time with him. And um, and and that you know. So I learned things from that. And one thing I learned from the very beginning was that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And I wanted to create time and space and freedom. And I wanted to give back to uh, to my community and give back to the world in uh, in similar ways that uh, that he did. And so, at the ripe age of eighteen, I started my entrepreneurial um, journey. And um, I had a bunch of a handful of good ones, and then a handful of bad ones. Uh, mm -hmm. But every time I fell flat on my face, I was kind of five foot six inches closer to uh, I think where I wanted to be. Yeah. And. Um, what, what I found really is about seven or eight years ago, um, I, I really found that the tech business and that all the things that I was doing and how the world was set up, it just really wasn't designed in a way to help um, eco-conscious, social good um, entrepreneurs um, with business models that are designed to help kind of us as a collective um, in a way that um, helped people live more connected lives that weren't focused on just making money and that were more focused on connecting us as, as humans. And, um, and so what I ended up doing was actually throwing a towel in on, um, on my last big startup uh, about seven years ago. And, and I moved up onto a mountain and in the same way that uh, kind of monks go into a cave and, uh, and meditate and think about their lives. I did, I did a similar thing, and, um, and I, I got into farming for a little bit, and I just spent a lot of time with plants. Mm. And, um, and farming wasn't necessarily the thing that I wanted to get into, but I really wanted to understand what was going to be my next thing, and why did I feel so unsupported as an entrepreneur, and what is it that the world is kind of missing in order to create more connection, and more happiness, and a more... Um, an environment for people truly to th to thrive, right? And um, and I wanted to create that, and and this was when um, business uh, incubators were just kind of getting started, and co working spaces were kind of just getting started, and um, and I was um, at the very beginning of this, but I wanted to do something more, hmm. and I had also been studying permaculture quite a bit, and. I, I had also lived in the jungle in a real estate venture that I had been in, been part of before. And I spent a lot of time um, being in the jungle and I really loved how lush 
it was. And mm-hmm. I really loved how like the plants work with each other in these most in these beautiful natural ways. Right. And if I could be a plant or a blade of grass or a monkey or a uh, something, it's like that's where I would want to live. Right. Right. And so, um, and so I, I got really interested in 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 how do we create that? How do we create that type of a living environment for people and for humans? And then how do we scale that? And that was really became kind of my next mission. And so, um, so I was, I'm really lucky to have a, an amazing relationship with, with my mother. And, um, and together, uh, we decided to, um, to buy a property and to um, develop it in such a way that we could start um, one of the first off-grid uh, business incubators uh, that's truly designed to um, give the people that are running the businesses that we run from here a lifestyle that um, is very, very, um, that gives back a mm. ton to these entrepreneurs and gives them a lifestyle that puts them in the flow state as much as possible and gives them a space where they can grow their business have recreation, have meditation retreats brought to them, yoga retreats brought to them, right. a place where they can recreate, and um, fresh food, organic food given to them, and really like put them at a place where they're most wild, their best, and their ideas and their businesses can actually function at the highest level possible mm. for them. And so, um, so that's what Heartland Collective is destined to be, you know, we're creating a community here and the businesses that we're launching are being launched from within the community. And then the, uh, the community itself and the businesses are actually designed to be um, are actually designed to be franchises of some sort to actually support other eco eco uh, villages mm. to help them also become financially uh, uh, financially profitable. And so they help them thrive. Amazing. Tell us where you are. I'm in grass, around the Grass Valley area of uh, California, about an hour from Sacramento. Right, and, and, and Heartland is a, a collective that you, I mean, one of the things you wanted to talk about, which was, I, I love this notion of, is this um, intergenerational collaboration. Um, because I don't really think it's been done for a good uh, thousand or a couple of thousand years, um, this notion of, of, um, of going in with different generations. Can you, can you speak about yeah. the principle of that and how that uh, honors the ecology of creating communities? Mm, yeah. So um, so I got into this with, uh, like I said, with my mother, um, Annalena Shama Gustafson. And uh, we've been involved in a few different business ventures together before. And we've done quite a bit of uh, personal development work together. And... Um, and, and, and through doing that, I realized how rare it is um, for, uh, for, for their kids and for their mothers or fathers to be doing a lot of personal development work together. Mm. And I also realized the more that we build this, how radically important it is to really heal these intergenerational relationships. Right. Because right. if we're talking about different... Uh, uh, distri- di- different changes in, in wealth and redistribution of wealth. It's like, whoa, if, if there's not enough trust built between younger generations and older generations, especially in this, in the conscious field, it's going to be um, really sad. I think it's going to be really sad if we were to have even bigger financial collapses than we're seeing right now. Mm. And all of this money that could be potentially used to create a future for our future generations if that's all lost, um, we're into um, it's we're going to be in big trouble. Mm. So one of the things that I'm really inspired to do is to talk more about this and inspire more connection between the different generations and inspire um, them to create models together and utilize us as an example. Because as that trust is built and as the generations can start working with each other, we're really tapping into a massive amount of wealth, which is going to be needed in order to build a lot of these different kind of eco villages right. that we need to create. Right, right. What What was the biggest? I mean, you know, I think about this notion of of, of calling up my mum and saying, "Hey, mum, let's buy some land together and uh, live on an eco." Now, you know, my mum is just 
she's a different kettle of fish to your mum. Although, interestingly, there are similarities. Um, but I think at heart, your mum, you know, was a hippie uh, in the day. I, I believe that's the case. And um, my mum was not. So it's okay to be able to bond with a hippie parent. But what do you do if your parents are bog standard parents? Yeah. Um, it's interesting that you say that because it's actually not true. Right. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's far from the truth. And, um, if you knew her five, 10, 15 years ago, um, she was very far away from seeming anything like that. Um, I, I think it, it all started, um, it all started, I think she seems more like that to some people because she's very young at heart. Yes. And she spends a lot of her time with younger people because it's really, really challenging to be 75 years old and be in a movement, which is you know, a movement that we're part of, when she feels so alone. Mm. And when mm. so many people that are elders don't actually have a foot in this next um, this next phase right. of the type of living that we're trying to create, I, I think she happens to um, just assimilate more with you know younger people, which right. makes her maybe seem like she's more open and you know, she's more hippie-ish. But um, I don't think that's a requirement for anybody. And I think that what is a, a, a requirement is people just have to start looking at new ways, you know, and then start right. having, looking at, for example, all the things that are happening today. Yeah. Um, what what a what an what an amazing opportunity it is for um, for anybody with partially open parents to say, hey, can we talk? You know, can we talk about right. the wealth that we have left? Potentially, if there is any wealth left, can right. we talk about what our future plans are? Can we talk about how we could potentially work together to co-create something right now? Is there interest to do that? Because I think disasters like this really offer amazing opportunities to begin discussions and yeah. conversations yeah i mean it absolutely makes so much sense to you know to begin this process of if you want to build a community if you want to have a community set up to do it with your family first but on the other hand does it also not make perfect sense to not do it with the family and to choose your family as opposed to kind of it being selected for you for sure yeah i, I think I, I think one of the main things which is really important in starting any type of eco community is that you have to really be on the same page with regard to the vision and where you want to go. Right, um, if right. you're not on the same page just because you're blood family, I, I, I think that it's a really challenging thing and probably not advised. So, so advisable. yeah. So I, I, I mean, it sounds like from your experience, it'd be great to do some sort of video uh, introduction, uh, educational, um, uh, shorts, to help people at this time who want to start the discussion with their family and or even I mean I can see it can be extrapolated to uh, just communities of friends as well it doesn't have to be family surely the wisdom's the same yeah so what would you what would you suggest as a first step I mean I think a first step is just to go um, go out and, and and witness you know witness places like Heartland there's there's many of them available and I think that I think experiences say so much more than um, than an intro conversation. Right. I mean, trying to convince anybody to do anything from within the family can be really, really hard. And I think it's the wrong place to start from. Right. I think it's to have uh, to have experiences together. Like like we have a thing here, for example, every year called Collab Campout. Yeah. And it's a it's an event really designed to bring families together bring people together and teach collaboration teach showcase kind of what it's like to live off grid and um and show that it's more than just it's just it's way more than just a party it's it's a lifestyle and it's something that is doable and is being done and look at all the growth you know that can be experienced through that so experiences i think is the best way to showcase okay that. i mean uh, that's obviously great but uh, we can't can't do experiences at the moment um so if, if people are watching and they're like you know what I would like to have a community. Uh, I'd like to share the resources that we've got. Um, you know, my parents have something. I have something. My brothers have something. What if we all collaborated together and, and created like a village, a compound? Um, what What are the first steps in in like forming the agreement fields and uh, 
and the notions of, of what it is that, that is going to govern it. How, how do you come up with the governing um, principles? Yeah, well, I think the first thing to do is to do your best and not start from scratch and um, and go spend time, you know, go spend time, invest money, invest uh, whatever resources you can into other communities that exist out there because uh, because there are many of them budding out there. And if you try to start something without never without ever having done it before, right, um, you're going to be up for a lot of different challenges. And and I, I, I only lived in one other community myself before. I've never done anything like this. And and I was really just a bit optimistically delusional with regard to right. everything that I would have to face and all the challenges we've been through. And it's uh, I, I would have definitely spent much more time in other communities before doing this. But now I'm six years in and I've you know, learned a bit. What would be some of the, the, the key things you'd want to... I mean, obviously, the advice of going and, and spending time and, and, um, and investing in other communities before you, you run. But, um, you know, from your experience of the six years, what are some of the, the obvious things that you would recommend people to, to pay attention to? Um, practice your patience a lot and, um, and know that things aren't going to take 10 times longer than you would probably like them to. Um, right. And, um, and you got to kind of just think about which pathway that you want to take. There's a few different ways to go. If you have a bunch of money, you know, you can hire a bunch of people and you can build everything out um, exactly like you want it. And then it's going to have a certain vibe. And then it's going to look exactly like the, the amazing community developer designed it to look. And that would be amazing. I mean, everybody right. loves driving a brand new car that has all the bells and whistles. And you just get in there. And everything's set. Everything's good to go, and it sounds a little bit like like I'm I'm really really interested to experience your next um, your next uh, caller because it sounds like that's kind of what he's into and what he's been developing for a while. You you know and, Ian Michael though, don't you? No. Oh wow! You don't know Ian Michael? Yeah. I'm sure that's one I've been trying to yeah. connect you up with. Oh, he's brilliant. You'll like Ian Michael. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm looking forward to that, and um, it's. I think it's a great, you know, it's a great option if possible for somebody to work with somebody mm. like that to really set things up. So if you set it up in the right in the right way, because there's there's a there's thousands of different mistakes that can be made, made along the way, and especially if you're working with a lot of different people that have a lot of different opinions, I mean, you, you might just never actually get started building anything, right? Uh, depending upon which uh, decision making model that you would choose. As a, as a community, the the easy thing comparatively for 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 me and for for my family has been that it's all the decision making top level is really done by us because we've been the investors in the right, whole thing. Right. Right. And so um, so we'll get to a point. I'm I'm hoping the next we'll get to a point in the next few years where um, the vision is to put the land in a land trust and have the collective essentially own shares in everything it is that we're doing. Uh, and then that will put us in a place where we can duplicate the model and start Heartland Collective uh, villages all around the world and have them all be uh, integrated. But yeah. what's great about where we're at right now is that decision making is actually quite simple. Right. Because you have you are the top. There's no investors. And I suppose that's a problem with, when we try and get money together to buy land um, is to, to actually find um, people who are going to help and contribute but aren't necessarily going to want to get involved in the um, in in the in the running of it. So I mean, yeah. okay. So so let's talk about like the the balance of things. Um, permaculture is something that's come up um, quite a bit with different uh, groups down, especially in Costa Rica, talking about permaculture. What what is it you understand by permaculture, and and how do you apply it to? Um, to, to business and to people. Hmm. Um, well, what I, I we're, what I love the most about permaculture is the concept of stacking functions, and um, and that's I think the the part of permaculture that I try to mimic as much as possible to make sure that everything I create is also supporting something else, and. Um, 
And so, so that's why the, uh, the business models that we look forward to launching here in the future, um, the choices, it, we'll have many choices for various different uh, ventures, but they have to, number one, serve us living here as a community. They have right. to, number two, serve, serve the community itself and the visitors you know, that might come to the community for various different types of events. And then they also have to be scalable so that they work, so that they become you know, financially regenerative for, for the business here and, um, and have to be scalable in the sense that they right. could also be duplicated at other intentional communities. So, um, so that's like one of, the, one of the ways we use that, uh, that theory. Nice. So what about businesses? I mean, this, this idea that, you know, uh, are we talking about communities that are to uh, remove themselves from society? Um, or is it, is it an element of um, being integrated with society? Yeah, our, our vision, and, and what, what I really enjoy also, and what I really think is that there's not a right way and a wrong way. And what's really important, I think, is that for all the different visionaries out there that are creating their examples of what an eco-village may look like, they're going to have their own beautiful, unique version of it. Right. And right now, it's like we're thousands of people and visionaries with our individual kind of ways and and uh, some people's version might work and some people's might not work but what's beautiful what i feel is really beautiful about it is that the um there's so much collaboration and there's so much sharing and it's like if something works for somebody else really well they are most likely going to be willing and wanting to share it with us and same goes for for me with other people right and um and uh, yeah, it's a really beautiful thing about what it is that we're doing. So the businesses themselves, the, the model that we use um, is that the, um, it's a very integrated model. Um, the living systems and business systems that we have here are designed so that the business models definitely function in the economy out there. And mm -hmm. it provides, uh, provides income to, it, the vision is for them to provide income for the business, business owners and also it gives back to the land and creates um, creates income for the land so that that can be used to purchase more land for the collective yeah it, make, it makes sense how it is there's a sort of circle round and and what are some of the businesses that are coming out of heartland so right now there's a few different phases which we're in right now we still are in a building phase we're really we're really teeing up still um, one of the one of the models which we're uh, developing is our events model and we have a handful of different events every year. We have Colab Camp Out, which I mentioned before, which is a kind of eco-village um, model where we, um, we share ex essentially what it is that we do and we teach collaboration. And then um, we also have an ecstatic dance event hosted by um, an ecstatic dance group out of here. Nice. We have a different, and then we have a, uh, an event called Heartbeat, which is a fusion dance event. And then um, we're ramping up to have our yearly PDC here starting next uh, next March. What's the PDC? Uh, a PDC is a permaculture design and certification. Nice. Oh, right. Yeah. A certification. That's great. So yeah. what, what goes on in that? So it's, uh, it's a little bit too early to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. We've been we've been trying to plan it for uh, for a few years. It's been for it's been on, it's been on, it's been something we've been really interested in. Um, but we really just wanted to wait until the right time, and now we found the right teachers, and we've, uh, we're really ramping up a really exciting program, which would integrate um, herbalism, and it would integrate social permaculture, and it would integrate utilizing um, uh, permaculture as a business concept, and it would add a lot of uh, entertainment and offer people a, an amazing opportunity to um, learn the skills they need to learn in order to build something like what it is that we're doing or integrate permaculture into their own lives. Now, of course, this whole COVID thing has, has shut anything down that's, that's physically got uh, people coming to. And, and Heartland had a couple of events on the books. And what are you doing to um, to sort of manage this uh, this scenario, this this uh, lack of physical bodies? Yeah. What are you doing with your time, man? What's that? What are you doing with your time? What are you spending your time doing? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question because uh, it's, it's kind of the least exciting answer, I think, to anything because the business as usual for us. Uh -huh. uh, we, we have uh, you know, a handful of really awesome projects that we're working on here currently, 
And all that it does for us is keep us more focused and more excited. And it actually gives us way more purpose in what it is that we're actually doing. We're currently we're in the process of really expanding all of our um, all of our food gardens so that we can be able to support the amount of food not only that we need as a community, but the amount of food that we're going to need in order to bring full farm to table experiences for our one to two hundred person events. And, um, and so we're building out that, and we're also in the process of rebuilding our new maker space. And the future vision of that is to have a full uh, full shop that has a full um, 15 foot by 15 foot by 15 foot 3D printer so that we can print houses and we can print architecture and we can print all kinds of amazing things. Wow. And so are, yeah. you, are you envisaging uh, that the people come to, for example, a collab and they learn how to build a, a project and it might be um, maybe somebody who wants to, to, to 3D print a house uh, brings a big lorry with them, a big truck, and, yeah. and everyone works together to 3D print and to fix out, fix out this house. And it's just on the lorry and then it, it drives off at the end of the weekend. Yeah, yeah, that could definitely be a possibility. Because then, yeah, then yeah, I, I mean, suppose those people could then sponsor the event yeah. Um, yeah. and have their house built for them. Yeah, exactly. It's it's I mean, one of the one that's one of the future models. You, know, you asked before about what are the different business models that we're going to be having and uh, having this uh, 3D printer on site. It's like you know building houses not just for ourselves, but most of the business models that we bring on board here are designed to be scalable for other eco communities. And so I found, you know, what entrepreneurs do is find problems. They find solutions to the problems. So because of this, because I've found a lot of problems and challenges right. in doing this myself, I know that every different Joe and Kathy that want to start an eco community are most likely going to be entering into the same challenges. So the business models that we're creating are, are, de are designed to solve those challenges so that they can be utilized to, as a service to these other eco communities and as a business model that those eco communities can use to fund their own uh, communities. Right. So, so what are you going to do? How are you going to output the, the, the wisdom that you've acquired from the, from the community uh, building? Um, how are we going to output the wisdom? Like, I, mean, I mean, how are you going to share think, all that information? I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm just neck deep in all of this stuff myself and, uh, and having a lot of fun doing it. And, I just kind of feel like it is true uh, that as we build it, they will come. The amount of new new partners that have come on board last six months and the people that have been reaching out wanting to be part of something like this, um, together collectively, we're going to co-create um, those different met methods of getting all mm -hmm. this information out there and, and integrating with other uh, other collectives. As of right now, you know, I'm, I'm out there many hours a day, you know, building building garden beds and doing everything I can, and it's... Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's difficult in a way because once you're involved with the community, it's like the community is the focus rather than um, all these other etheric communities that maybe are, are, are not created yet. Right. It's quite easy to get lost in the source of the community. Um, is it a bit like working for yourself where there's never really an end uh, to the day? Yeah, it to, to a degree it is, and, and to a degree I think that the more time I've spent on this and the more patient that I've begun with the process, the more um, acceptance I've had with the process, and, and uh, I just love where I am. Mm -hmm. I love where I am right now, and um, it's, we, so we have right now, I've, uh, I've kind of had to put aside some of my um, like business building desires because I've just surrendered into the build process that we're into, and until I until somebody shows up that's um, you know as good as I am in these various different um, aspects of um, project management and um, community building, then you know I can't let let that part go because right. it's that part which is the driving force of make taking the steps right. that we're taking. And right now I'm really excited about it because we have this really prolific. Um, work trade um, where we're part of many different work trade networks and these uh, people are coming in from all over the world and right now we have uh, you know we, we've had people here from Chile from Brazil from Pakistan from um, uh, where else 
was from Costa Rica and from Ecuador and a bunch from the U.S. And it's really beautiful and really amazing to really sit with these people and co-create with these people. Mm. And they're just here to help. They're here to make whatever happened happen. And, um, and I have gratitude. I have gratitude yeah. for all of them. And I think that it's, um, it's a power, powerful opportunity for those people. And uh, during this time, yeah. I've just also accepted that um, some of the other things that you know I might be, maybe want to spend time on doing with regard to business development and business building, it's, um, it's worth it to inst- instead spend time around the fire with people at right. night time. And right. spend, spend time with get to know people and honor them for being here and supporting right. what right. it is that we're doing. Right. I mean, of course, everyone comes in with the, 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 you know, the good intentions. Um, you know, everyone believes that their intentions are, are right and just in a way. Um, I mean, my famous example is even Hitler thought he was doing right. Um, and so not comparing the people who are coming onto your community to Hitler. But the point is that everyone comes on with the notion of, OK, I'm, I'm really here to make a difference, blah, 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 blah. What is it the important factors that, that, that interact with how well people get on? Um, are you using tools like astrology and the Mayan calendar and human design to see how working groups knit together or you're just kind of throwing them all together and see what happens? Uh, we're just throwing them together and seeing what happens for the, for the most part. Uh-huh. Um, I, I, I love human design. I really, really, I love Gene Keys and I love all of that stuff. And I love, I, I think that's kind of, that's the direction where we're going in the future and to really get these businesses working together and, and to offer courses for the businesses to really get to know business partners within the businesses to get to know each other. I think those things are amazing and really, really powerful. Mm-hmm. But right now we're talking about shoveling dirt and moving concrete blocks and digging holes and um, building fences and, you know, things that pretty much anybody can do and, and um, what we have to keep things really solid and keep people accountable is a really powerful personal growth program attached to our work trade program and so with that we we during the first month that people are here um we require that people read the four agreements book by Mm -hmm. don miguel ruiz it's a it's a basic book and many people come here and say they've read it you know before but we request that they read it again and every week we have a different questions with regard to all the different agreements and then we share these within the community and it's really powerful and people are then able to um, they're challenged to live up to the expectations that we collectively set on everybody to be impeccable with the word to not make assumptions not take things personally and to always do their best and it's really beautiful to experience people start to you know nudge and support each other in these different ways and then um, the second month, if they stay longer than that, we um, require people to read Braving the Wilderness by Brene Brown. And um, in that book, uh, people are just inspired to explore their own vulnerabilities and share their own vulnerabilities with others and be, you know, take their integrity to a new level. And, uh, and, and it really creates an opening that uh, creates a deeper bond and a deeper level of trust between everybody that's here. And the the third month, we get into, um, um, there's two different books. One is called um, 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 Tribal Leadership. And Tribal Leadership is a book that I'm really inspired by because it takes the different types of leadership styles and, um, and, and I consider what, we, what we're running here is like a level five, uh, level five leadership. And it's a very integrated and very uh, powerful way to lead. And, it, um, and the reason we have these books is that in, in, in essence, we're just slowly grooming people to see if they want to be with us long term. Right. And, um, and if they want to be with us long term, they understand our culture and they understand where we're going. And then, and then I can slowly but surely hand off, you know, different, you know, they can lead our community meetings. And they can start leading new crews that come here and they can start doing things. And, they've, you know, it's been slowly been kind of uh, working at these things as they get here. Yeah. So, um, 
So yeah, to answer your question, I think we uh, in a little uh, because we talk about all these things up front, and we have six or seven pages of agreements that people have to sign before they, they step onto our property. Mm -hmm. um, we or sometimes I forget to have them actually sign it, but you know they'll read through it all, right? And then uh, and then they, they sign the stuff when they get here, but um, so people know what they're getting into, and they know they're kind of right. come here to work, and they know they're kind of come here to grow. And it's very rare. I've only had to ask a couple people to kind of leave. Yeah. And um, it's, it's beautiful when yeah. all those things are in place. So, so it sounds very important to create the clarity of expectations and the communication uh, beforehand. Yeah. <clears throat> Before people are committed in, clarify all the agreements that, right. uh, that are there. Um, and have you got any uh, images to show us? I, I know I, I, I'm not sure if you're set up for that. Have you got any images to show us of, of Heartland, of the work you're doing, of the of the Kiva and different things you're building? Oh, that's a great question. See if you um, can see if you can pull it up in the background while we're talking. Um, yeah, sure. Agreements. I'm just writing down the agreement point um, to, to be to be. I mean, that's, and that's and I think that's probably what the impeccable with the word is, right? Yeah. Um, um, having the clarity and thought and what about um, um, rules of of conduct of um, of food of being vegetarian uh, drinking alcohol uh, smoking weed all those different things <clears throat> what do you have uh, uh, in place in Heartland <clears throat> we, we have um, uh, um, we're definitely I don't have them here in front of me, um, but but essentially, it's um, we are drug we are um, a drug free um, environment, um, and we don't um, we don't say that people can't smoke or people can't drink, but we don't encourage it. You know, right. we have a smoking section where people can go and like do that if they like, choose to do that. Right. Um, but it's not something that you know like that we do. We're we're definitely um, we want to be considered as a professional venue and we want people that come here to feel that and um, we have people that come here regularly for Airbnbs and for um, for other types of other, other seminars and other types of stays and so the people that come here on work trade are uh, know that they're working at a professional venue right and um, we have a weekly meeting um, every uh, every Monday where we come together and it's called FICA and that's kind of when we talk about all the things that are happening in, um, in, the, in the collective. And we talk about the projects that we have going on. And we talk about you know, how we're all feeling and what we all felt, you know, happened the last week. And what we celebrate, what we, what we completed. And we talk about our goals for the next, mm. next week. And then um, it's, a, it's a powerful um, experience. And we also have a daily, uh, daily check-in as well every morning we get together and then we uh, we come together and we let everybody know all, once again it happens in 15 20 minutes so right. it's just a quick check-in on how everybody's doing and saying things up that they need to they need to talk about and then we talk mm -hmm. about the projects and then we get the day rocking nice i and, and i suppose as you're saying you're not really that affected by the the covid situation except there aren't more people coming into you like daily life on the farm on the ranch is is pretty much the same right yeah, and start, starting now, May first, we are actually opening the doors. We've been on uh, we've been on lockdown here for um, for a little bit over a month. Nobody's come in and out. Mm -hmm. We've had to cancel some visitors from different places. Um, but now, May first, it's going to be an interesting experience because we're gonna, going to have an on-site um, self quarantine process. So the new people that are coming in, yeah. they're going to have to spend like 10 days, kind of like a Heartland Vipassana wow. on their own. Um, and we'll, we'll bring them food and, and take care of them. And then we'll practice social distancing um, on uh, on property here. Um, but they won't be kind of like in our in our public spaces. And it's going to be a really interesting experience. Where are they going to stay? What sort of accommodation do you have for them? Uh, we have bell tents. We have bell tents set up with some beds inside, and you know, ni nice little, uh, nice little places. And, and we have a lot of outside areas where a lot of decks, you know, and a lot of areas where where we can, we can we, where we can kind of hang out. Yeah, I like that. Um, 
uh, Heartland uh, Vipassana. And, and so then what about Colab? Colab should have been coming up uh, um, this sort of time, right? And so are you doing an online version? Yeah, in, in a parallel universe, Colab was last weekend. Right. It's up in the air. It's a little bit up in the air. We, uh, we would like to do it. Yeah, we w- would like to do a one day uh, online version, um, probably in a month or so. We have we don't have specific dates for it. Um, it's it's in, it's interesting. It would it would be an interesting experience to try to showcase a real hands on type festival right. type event at, on right as an as an online platform. Yeah, because I mean the main thing is is about getting practical tools for uh, uh, creating stuff. Um, yeah, right. You know, I suppose you could have the situation where you've instructed everyone, okay, everyone get a pallet, everyone have a hammer, everyone have a, you know, and, uh, and yeah. follow along. Um, yeah. But then, you know, I think that, you know, I went to the last collab and, and the joy of it was um, working in collaboration with people who you don't necessarily know on yeah. a project to get it done in union. Yeah. Like, um, you know, joining with other people to, to create a project. There was a certain... Um, um, pleasure that that came out of seeing the finished product that everyone had put a little bit into you know yeah um so yeah so you're opening up may 1st for the vipassana and uh i believe you're going to have a a a yurt there soon yeah Yeah, nice yeah really excited about that (laughs) um we'll have to talk about deck building and, and everything um so what's the future look like for for heartland um you're going to uh, expand out. Um, what about the governing structures? Are, are, are people going to buy in and, and have governance right? Who, what determines who, what decisions are made? Is it just you and your mum that are like the, you know, the, the presidentes, or is it a more a collaborative, collective thing? Yeah, it's um, great questions, and uh, we're just a little bit too early to define the exact details of how we're going to. Uh, exactly function but the um, before we have to make those steps uh, we're definitely launching a membership model um, where people can become members of Heartland Collective on various different levels and um, and get to um, get to feel like they're part of something right. and uh, the, the different types of membership levels would give them opportunities to join us at the you know, join us at the PDC so they can really learn what permaculture is and mm-hmm. learn how to how to create something like this, even if it's in the backyard of their own home to a certain smaller degree. Right. Or right. the the membership levels would give them access to Colab Camp Out and to the dance events and give them access to come and you know camp here for free X amount of nights a year and uh, and and really I mean also really give them some sense of participation, you right. know, in something like this. So yeah. if this, if everything goes goes bad, who knows how, what the future is going to look for any of us? But if everything you know gets bad, then there's just a sense of comfort knowing that you are connected on some level with places like Heartland, right. so that people have a place to go. Do Do you see it like a sort of timeshare, like an eco village timeshare pod, like yeah. um, like Heartland's here, and then you know you've got this collective over here, and people just sort of almost hop around. Yeah. To, to their locations. Yeah, exactly. You know, does this, there's been this notion because in, in, inside the hippie type of, um, you know, let's all live together and be on kibbutz uh, uh, style culture that, that seems to be ramp, rampant in California, which is part of the reason I'm here. Um, <laughs> but within that, there is this notion that, you know, we're all equal and we don't need a leader and there shouldn't be leaders. There should be a socialist, Bernie, Bernie. A socialist style uh, 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 operation, but I've also heard the notion that you that sometimes you actually need a leader, someone to say I'm in charge, this is what's happening, and until and 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 we'll do it like this until such a time where there's a a, 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 a crystallized net to to be able to distribute the power to. What? Yeah. What's your take on on that? Those two approaches. Yeah, definitely the latter. Um, definitely the, the latter part. And and I also feel that whenever people come here, and it's so important also not to micromanage like anybody. 
um, uh, or as little as possible. Just nothing would get done. And, uh, and because I, uh, I also believe in shared leadership, even though I believe that right now at this time, because uh, you know, my mom and I make most of the decisions here because we've invested most of the money and we right. put in a radical amount of time. But, um, but we do have a really interesting work trade program where we also track time. We track a lot of time that a lot of people put in here. Right. And we have spreadsheets uh, that show us exactly how much time people have put in here since the day that we started. And, uh, and we look forward to um, creating some type of uh, cryptocurrency of our own where all of that time is, goes into time bank, and which mm. also then correlates to a certain type of value over time. And those that value would give people voting rights in big decisions that are going to be made here in the right, future. Right. Yeah. I mean. I mean, that's definitely one of those big problems that that you know um, people with money seem to have the charge because they've bought the land and what have you. But if the community comes and someone stays in the community for a year and gives everything they are to building the community, then you know. Uh, almost at, at the whim of the owners they could just say okay thanks very much piss off and the person has no um no well nothing to show for the for the time that they've invested what are some ways that we can you know get around that i mean part of it is going to be trust part of it is definitely trust and um and, and I think that if the owners of the property are expecting people to do those types of things without any, any return to those people, you know, it feels a little bit unfair. Yeah. You know, um, to us, you know, we, we provide food and we, and we don't ask for people to provide more than four or five hours a day to support. And we also provide a living system. We, and we provide the system. We provide a recreation. We provide an experience for people that, um, that I think is a really good fit if people want to stay for a month or two mm. months or three months. Um, if, if people are um, aligned and people do want to stay for that longer amount of time, after people have been here you know, for between six and nine months, we definitely want to get into having conversations with regard to how are we actually collaborating? How can we actually make this fair for somebody long term? Because we do want people to be here mm. long term. Um, and we also want the right people to be here long time term. We want people right, that are aligned right. on all the different levels that we have created. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. And, and I feel that I am like one of the first to also tell people that you know, if this isn't perfect for you, if, if what we're offering you know, doesn't make you happy, and doesn't actually fulfill your life right now, then you're super free to go. You mm -hmm. know? And then there is another place out there where you belong and I would want for them to be at that place because I wouldn't want this place to take a drop of energy from anybody if they're not in it you know wholeheartedly right so the integrity of the people holding the space obviously is key here um, yeah. and, and being clear about that as a as a starting point the integral nature um, did you like write out then you know your visions and your and your goals and your stuff or I mean how, how did you how did you disseminate what was important from what was not yeah i mean we have we have a full business plan and and we have uh ways in which uh, we run you know all the things that we're doing and it's also it's also all um changing you know right. a, li a little bit because the world is changing a right. little bit so it's it's fluid but we definitely do have plans and we have plans for the future and we have uh and i really believe that what's happening right now is is really exciting and I also mean to say that in the most humble way because yeah. I know a lot of people out there are going through really really challenging times right yeah. now and at the same time um, you know if, if, if I was three four five years ahead I know that I could offer much more to those people that are having a really really hard time mm -hmm. um, but I know that I'm only three or four or five years out from being able to do that right when something like this were to happen again or if this stuff gets worse you know so you find these community uh hubs are, are being created by you and others as really good um absorbent points for when tragedy hits 
Uh, do you do you see this as the, the sort of beginning of, of the movement of society? Like, I mean, I know it's been happening, but do you, do you, do you have a uh, do, you, do you sense that the COVID situation is actually going to push people more into uh, living in communities? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if people are ready yet. Hmm. I'm not sure if it's bad enough for people. You know, there's there's a lot of comfort. There's a lot of comfort to living the lives that we used to live. Um, if, if, if things go back as usual and if people are too attached to that, you know, doing what we're doing out here, um, especially at the startup phase, it takes hard work. Right. You know, and it takes a lot of people to come together and do that, and you have to really want to do it. Um, I don't think that this COVID situation is going to um, change the mind of um, any type of majority. Mm. And at the same time, I think that that some people that were on the fence are really going to jump in and, right. um, and people are going to get started. And because people like me and many others have started, you know, many years back, we can offer them a lot of support and uh, next time around or the next time after that, um, at that point, we're going to go mm. see a lot of this stuff start, start popping up. And by that time, we'll really be ready to support in a big way. Nice, nice. Uh, Jay, uh, Jay says, um, get the infrared sauna set up because it kills COVID. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, the, your new people on May 1st can, um, you know, start to, you just dose them. You say you have to stay in a sauna for three hours and yeah. uh, see how they survive. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're really excited about that partnership, actually. The, um, the vision there is to, um, the, Jay and Karen, um, they had a, a spa in uh, in santa cruz mm -hmm. and so the vision is to bring that spa into heartland uh, which would have float tanks and saunas and um, various different types of um, sensory exaltation experiences to offer a healing aspect um, to our retreat uh, sector nice nice when's what what's the stages on that is that all being put back because of the um because of the covid yeah ev everything is being delayed a little bit we were we were hoping to um, get funding um, in a few from a few different sources, uh, bank funding, and mm. even though uh, you know all the paperwork looked good before, but when all of right. this stuff happened, the banks are doing what banks do at, at the moment, or on their heels a little bit. So, right, right. So right. we'll see. And then, and then there's some land next door to Hotland. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have about um, um, there's a few hundred acres of land available that uh, we're really excited to find the right partner to come on board and really expand what it is that mm. we're doing. So uh, if anybody out there is listening and they feel inspired by what it is that we've been talking about, we're definitely looking for the right partners to uh, come on board and uh, explore how we can co-create. Nice. Well, Ian Michael, who's about to come on, um, is your man for connecting dots over there. And, um, and you, you know, obviously, you know, Cassandra, don't you? Yeah, I do. Cool, and she's uh, she's giving a, a, a talk uh, in May on uh, this for this foundation for intentional communities. You're connected yeah. with them. Yeah, beautiful. You're connected with that foundation. Is that a good place for people to start for intentional communities? I'm actually not connected with them, but I've heard much about them and heard it's, it's a good place. Right, right. Well, should check it out. Well, Anders, thanks so much for coming on, my brother. Um, how can people get in touch with you in the Heartland? Um, so um, I, I do have a, a two-minute video here, oh. or one-minute video. Okay. Can we end with that? Yeah, yeah, well, let's do it. Well, then, and then we'll bring Ian in, Ian Michael but, in. But before we get there, I think that uh, people get in touch with me through, um, through Facebook as a great way, and also through our website, heartlandcollective.org. Uh -huh. Okay, heartlandcollective.org. And uh, you're going to do this video now, then? And I'll do a yeah. seamless transition into your screen share.
thanks so much for that. So Heartland Collective, thanks so much for that, Anders. Uh, people can see Anders at uh, Heartland Collective. Oh, God, what a show. Thank you uh, to my guests, uh, Anders from Heartland, wonderful community builders um, for harnessing the magic of what is present. And, and it seems like we have all the keys we need. And what is most important is the trust. Not trust in some other being or some other thing, but trust inside yourself that you both have skill sets and fixed aspects of self that you can use. And at the same time, this humble surrender, both are humble, but the surrender to the flexibility of what is to come. Holding both of those notions, those approaches humbly allows us to, to sit inside the, the witness space. And with our breath, that is where we tune into to what is harmonically coherent with the world, with our environment, with our family, with our lives, with the trees, the beautiful redwoods. Ah, oh, yes, I, wow. Okay, uh, I have a book, Book Evolve. Check it out, bookevolve.com. Oh, to me, uh, Mark Abadi, I, I will see you all tomorrow. Please like, share this video. I know they're long interviews, but you know what? They're, they're deep dives into the wisdom that comes out when we really sit in humble witnessing. Thank you again to my guest, Ian Michael. Much love, brothers. And to Anders, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.